ko Waio, ko Te Atiawa, ko Taranaki Te Iwi, ko Joshua Hitchcock Aho. For the past 15 years, I've worked in and for Māori businesses around Aotearoa. As a commentator on Māori issues, I have a deep interest in how Māori businesses operate and how Māori contribute to and are impacted by the New Zealand economy. This documentary takes a look into the Māori economy to see how it works, what drives it, and what makes it, and the businesses who operate within it, different from the wider New Zealand economy. So I welcome you to this insight into a fascinating and growing part of the Aotearoa New Zealand economy. The contemporary Māori economy has developed in three waves. The first wave was the development of land-based businesses following the return of Whenua Māori in the 1900s. The second wave was seen in the growth of iwi-owned businesses as a result of the settlement processes that started in the 1990s. In this episode, we explore businesses operating within the third wave, the growing number of Māori entrepreneurs and SME owners making their own mark on the world, who are forging their own path, who are creating value, creating jobs and prosperity for your whānau. We call the group the MDA Group, is the tour company. MDA Experiences that operates our luxury tours, so that's our bread and butter. That's where most of our money's made, is looking after high net worth clients. We literally look after tens of thousands of people each year through the different operations, whether it be the events or the mountain bike company or our tour company. Kaitiakitanga, you know, tanga, manakitanga, yeah, those, those three words are used a lot. But I think it's that ethos that we have in the company that has been a big part of it growing, more so than, than anything else. Between all the different companies, we have over 50 staff. As a group, you know, we've had around about 600% growth over the last five years, so it's definitely taken off in a short period of time. So in 2003, I formed the Plus Group, and the first one of those companies was Grow Plus, which is the, the largest uh, privately owned or independent orchard management company in the kiwifruit industry. I started thinking about really where we're going to be in five years and ten years, like thinking into the future and thought, hey, robots would be really cool. So I went down to Massey University where I understood there was a bit of a robotics unit beginning and um, that's where I met uh, Alistair Scarf. He was uh, looking at doing a PhD. His PhD was really around an autonomous vehicle uh, or a UGV uh, that could drive around an orchard by itself and it could harvest it. So identify the fruit in the vine and reach up and harvest it. He finished his PhD and said, well, okay, let's go. Let's, let's build a billion dollar robotics company. Today we're now just over 60 staff, we're looking at doubling that number in the next uh, 12 months. Uh, we're global, uh, we had uh, 10 million US invested by Yamaha Motoko Japan. I really wanted Robotics Plus to be an exemplar for the Māori community from a tech perspective. Let's do it like Maui, you know, get on a waka and row and take on the world, you know. So this is Fush, uh, this is our whānau business. <laughs> if we had to pitch New Zealand on a plate, what would it be? Italians have got pizza and pasta. What do we have? And we thought fish and chips. We employ over 50 staff, depending on the time of year, because it's seasonal. You know, throughout summer it's a little bit more, throughout winter um, it's a bit slower. Between both of our restaurants, we turn over just over $3 million a year. We're busy restaurants, we, we turn over a, a bit of dosh, but it's about trying to create a space where People can come in, they can hear te reo Māori being spoken, they can experience tikanga, such as manaki tanga and kaitiaki tanga, and where the staff can work in pursuit of tino rangatira tanga. Really, that's what our purpose is, and, and really, that's, that's what I'm trying to create for my, for my children. We had no money, we had no waka, no paddles, no gear. We started, uh, we made a contract with our club and um, we said, oh, if we, can we lease waka and gear from, from the Motueka Waka Ama Club and um, we'll pay a lease every time we do that. And so that meant that we could ta start taking groups out. 
And then we bought our first waka and it was blessed in November 2016. Uh, down here at 4.30 in the morning, 80 people, mana whenua, supporting um, the blessing of our first waka, which was amazing. And so that's the journey of that first relationship with Whenuiti. So now we do 100 waka days with them, that Outdoor Pursuit Centre. It's grown organically for us at a good rate, uh, where we've been able to each kind of year go right yeah now we can get another waka uh, now we can get a shelter for our waka uh, and not kind of biting off more than we can chew which for us has been key we'd, we've seen that happen with others where they've overcommitted and then it doesn't turn out very well money's not first for us money comes behind and actually supports uh, what we do our business is all about our lifestyle so that we could share bringing up our children, we could be doing what we love, raising awareness with things Māori. Everything that we do is all held in tikanga and so it's really important to us we hold tikanga like Waka huia, you know, it's a treasure for us. So that's our whānau, that's our, our waka community, that's our Māori whānau here, our wider community. So whānau is really important to us, and so is how we run our business and live our lives. It's all interconnected, it's not separate. The major hat that I wear at the moment is directing a company to do a bioscience uh, focusing on medicinal cannabis. There's a Hapu Trust, Hikarangi Takiwa Trust. You know, the kaupapa really came out of how do we increase the well-being of our whānau back home and in and around Rua Toria, the Waiupu Valley. But within the Rua Bioscience, you know, we've got 20, 25 staff now. A year ago, 15 months ago, we had three of us. Māori are super entrepreneurial, they're very good at adapting and the Māori economy is the maturing of that. So for me the Māori economy is, the, is where you have whānau focused, intergenerational focused decisions being made on creating wealth through pūtia that increases wealth through well-being. They call me kaitiaki. So, but I, I've labelled myself as caretaker of our land, our whenua, our honey. So we're part of a group that have joined up with Ngāti Pro Miere Tairawhiti to ask Shane Jones to support us to build an extraction plant here on the East Coast. I think an organisation over all the Ngāti Pro beekeepers would be a wonderful thing. We're mostly small to medium sized beekeepers and the people we're competing against are big conglomerates adds a bit of integrity to our product too because it's all Ngāti Pro. It's done here, it's processed here, and it's sold here. It's, it was, hopefully we'll get our own Ngāti Pro brand, which I think is really important. The skills that we will require and the people that we will require to work to provide those skills can all come from here, you know. We don't have to have people from overseas. Here, it just matters so much because there is so little opportunity for our young people. It's a massive opportunity and one that we can control ourselves um, and people from Ngāti Pro can control and it also gives us control over our honey and will enable us to then start looking to market um, you know, and further push things further down the line and not be stuck at selling a, a honey in a 44 gallon drum. Mm. We started around 2014. So the foundation of everything is, is graphic design, film and web. In the beginning it started just a bunch of us as mates hanging out because we all went to Otago Polytechnic. We've grown up as kind of like these delinquents and people that get distra distracted in class and we started like just banding together and over time like we got work inside the Polytech as well so we were both students and doing mahi. After a while we ended up making more putia um, outside of mahi than inside of mahi and that's sort of where the magic began, eh? Maui Studios Aotearoa employs 10 people, 7 are based here in New Zealand, there are another 3 that are based in different places all around the world and when it comes to the, the heavy lifting we have 40 plus contractors also around the world. We want to take the Māori story everywhere and take it to other indigenous cultures that may have a similar history. 
We play a hundred year game, we play a thousand year game where we're thinking generations ahead. We start a business not because we want to see a tidy as profit margin at the end of the day, although we know that's important and we can do that now because we understand how the system works. Like we're post all the colonization and all those types of things like cool. Okay, that happened. We're products of that and now we're on the other end. We understand how this game's played and now we're going to use that to help build, build our peoples back up. Not only are we able to maintain our values as Māori, but we can pull in the resources and play the game that mainstream's playing so we can amplify our people. And I think now that we are getting back into understanding what the full potential of this country is, in large part motivated by the growing Māori economy, you know, we will be an exceptional country. In a short period of time, the New Zealand economy will depend on the Māori view of the world and the world's view of the Māori culture to create that unique proposition about New Zealand. Reimagining what business in Aotearoa can be if we start thinking about a collective, long-term approach to business could redefine how we as a country do business. That is the challenge for Aotearoa in moving forward.